Writing this script has been a headache. What started as a piece to call out the absurdity of the price of a single tasteless macro logger at the Qatar World Cup has taken an aggressive turn for the worse. At time of writing, the Qatari government has banned the sale of alcohol inside and immediately outside the stadiums. Instead of wasting what I had written down thus far, let's take a look at how we got here. It all started on Tuesday the 15th of November. I suspect you can tell from my amateur editing skills that I have a day job. It was after I finished work that I fell into my routine of going home, walking my dog, enjoying a night out with my wife, and relaxing with a brew. We were in the tram heading into town when I came across an article from The Guardian that mentioned the price of a single Budweiser at the upcoming World Cup would be $13.75. After the initial shock wore off, the gear started to turn for a script to call out this absurdity. No one should pay that much for an indistinct macro at a football match. Before you point out, of course it would have been overpriced. It's the biggest football tournament in a country that sentences people to be flogged for drinking in public. Don't defend price gouging. Most especially from the largest global beer conglomerate. Budweiser is in no way, shape, or form a beer worth paying nearly $14 for. What can I possibly say about AB InBev that hasn't already been pointed out? The whole operation is driven by a more-is-never-enough ethos. They represent all that is wrong with the business side of brewing. They corner the market with a battering ram of money, whether it's in buying out craft brands or being the only game in town when it comes to concessions at sporting venues. They are to brewing with the Borgard of Star Trek, and normally, they get their way. Sure, they're not going to be selling any $14 beer, but they still stand to make a lot of money for breach of contract by the Qatari government. Even when they can't sell their wares, they still somehow manage to turn the situation to their advantage. But let's take a step back for a minute. Just imagine that the inaugural match was set to go ahead with $14 buds at the ready. Fans from all over the world have and continue to flock to the Arabian Gulf, and the only option for them at the stadium would have been 500 milliliters of swill. That means they'd spend nearly $60 for the four beers allowed per order. That's highway robbery. Not convinced? Well, according to The Guardian, there is one exception to the stadium ban for alcohol. If the attendee has paid for a hospitality box at the match, then alcohol would be available to them and their guests. How much does the cheapest hospitality box cost? A little under 20,000 pounds. Still don't think you're being robbed for the privilege of drinking Budweiser? Now, I'll pump the brakes some. This really does not matter much in light of what a debacle the preparations for this tournament have been. FIFA and the Qatari government do not have international approval on their side. Nor should they. The human rights violations, the treatment of immigrant laborers, the shushing campaign to silence dissent are all obviously way worse than the availability, the quality, and the price of beer at the World Cup. But I'm an obsessive jackass, so of course this caught my attention. Before I fall off my soapbox, let me also be clear. I understand the region is mostly dry. That said, I've been to the Middle East, and it is possible to have a large segment of the population, even an outright majority, be Muslim and still allow for alcohol. I've had beers and spirits from Turkey, Lebanon, Jordan, Palestine, and Morocco to name a few. I've been to liquor stores and bars in Amman, and I've even visited a craft brewery in the Hashemite Kingdom. It is possible to both respect local cultural and religious attitudes, and allow for reasonably priced, even high-quality craft beer. Yes, monarchies in that part of the world can do this. I've seen it with my own eyes. Qatar, FIFA, and their sponsors are botching this possibility with gusto. It didn't have to be this bad, but here we are. I was ready to throw a video together on Thursday the 17th, but the story just got worse and worse before the ban finally came down the next day. I shake my head and I wonder why. They had over a decade to get this right, and they messed up every step of it. How? Why add to the madness by banning beer? It's immoral to consume alcohol, say those in power. What of the gross human rights violations that went into making all this happen? Or the staff at hotels who are overworked, underpaid, and subject to unwanted sexual advances by their superiors? What of the obvious corruption that went into selecting this place to host? Are these two not immoral? An affront to anyone with a good conscience? Of course not. We need to make sure our guests don't intoxicate themselves in those nice new stadiums that will be deserted forever after this competition concludes. We don't want anyone harming themselves with alcohol. This sick situation shows where their priorities lie. It's alright if migrant laborers suffer and die in service of making them look good. 
but the thought of people being intoxicated on the streets built by those same abused and neglected workers? That's just unbearable. They have an image to maintain, after all. What would the prohibitionist neighbors think about them allowing guests to have a modicum of the same game day experience that they expect back home? Makes them look bad, they say. But getting away with corruption and profiting off rampant exploitation is fine. Because throwing enough money at something awful makes it disappear. You, sir, have no legs to stand on, nor a high ground to run to. With just hours away, there's not much to be done about this. I have a modest, perhaps even entirely symbolic suggestion. Whether you choose to watch the matches or not, if you enjoy a beer, maybe don't drink anything made under the AB InBev umbrella. Make no mistake, there are no victims in this debacle, even when not selling as much as they had expected. They are still going to make bank off the litigation. I have a link in the description below if you wish to avoid the AB InBev family. The World Cup is increasingly becoming less and less about the game. What has come to replace the sport is a circle jerk of advertising partnerships and whitewashing the image of dubious national governments who host the tournament. If all we can do is not buy the brands affiliated with the governing body of global football, so be it. Finally, a reminder. Life's too short to drink crap, and it's certainly too precious to raise a glass to celebrate the triumph of a despotic regime as they grandstand hosting the beautiful game.